Hi, it's Dr. Janie Pendleton. We are back with our lesson number one. Um, I'm hoping that you can see this. I could not get the camera set up anywhere where you could see this directly on. And all of my wipe-off boards are in a room where it's really, really cold in there. We have sub-zero temperatures out right now. And even our fireplace is not working. You're going to hear the furnace kick off and on a lot. But we're at almost uh, minus 10 degrees right now. And it's just cold. It's very cold. I don't think we can throw boiled water up in the air and uh, put it in the snow yet, though. But I think it's getting close. <laughs> All right. So these are the lessons that are attached to the last video that we talked about. I decided to give lessons. Uh, we've had so many people interested in asking questions and stuff, and we just love that. You're peppering us with questions. We absolutely love that. But we decided we're going to break this down into lessons and have everybody come along and watch each shorter video in a lesson. So in the last video, we discussed the preliminary preface of what we would be doing here. The basics of the ultimate survival tools that we need and skills that we need. And we just did like a, um, a synopsis, so to speak, of what this was going to be about. So, um, lesson number one. I titled this one, How to Assemble an At-Home Survival Kit. Assemble an At-Home Survival Kit. So if you tend to uh, have a scenario where, and most people will in the United States bug in at home, but if you feel that you have to leave your home, then we're going to do another type of video for that. So bear with me, that's a different type of bag. This is an assembled at home survival kit. Okay, this isn't a bag, it's a kit. These are things that you will need, all right? So I'm just gonna read some things to you here and you're gonna see some squares, make some little squares going down your page. These are gonna be your check off squares. And when we get done with each one, we will put a check in the box, okay? So whether you're at home or out on running your errands, no matter where you are, you should always have certain uh, survival essentials at hand. You still want to have a few comforts of home in there as well. So don't forget comforts of home, medications, things like that. That's what we're going to cover today. What do you need it at your at-home survival kit? And you can assemble a variety of kits for every situation. So in other words, if you have a tornado, you could have a kit in your shelter or where you're going to shelter out at. You can have, um, like in the basement or something, you can have a kit in case there's a flood to, um, to be at home or to quickly grab and go. Uh, if there's a war scenario, you can have a weapon or weaponry inside or a knife inside um, your kit. So I mean, it depends on what your scenario is. So you're going to want to make separate kits for each scenario, okay? That's where a lot of people get confused. I don't have one um, assembled at home survival kit. I have the three to four most likely kits that I will need for our scenario, for our situation. See, I don't live in a hurricane zone, but I do live in a earthquake along the Madrid Fault line, and I live in Tornado Alley. So you combine the two of those plus the nuclear uh, sites, the nuclear sites, we'd have nuclear fallout. Those would be my th three most likely scenarios. So you have to first start your plan. What is your most likely scenario? So I'm going to give you my list of things that I'm that are best prepared for me. And you're going to think of other things, and we can leave some of these blank. You're going to think of other things, and as you go look at other people's videos, that's good. That means you're researching and you're coming up with other new ideas. And if you think I've forgotten anything, then join in on the conversation and um, add your ideas below in the comment section below. So starting off, by putting together the items below that I'm going to write in here below for you, um, you can create a fully stocked at-home kit. And these kits can meet the needs of you and your family in a disaster, any dis in, any, in most disaster scenarios. Uh, you want to store it someplace accessible so that you're always at the ready. Okay, so store it someplace very accessible, like maybe under a club chair, or maybe like in a shoe box, you know, like a um, like a toy box, 
recycle a toy box from one of your toddlers when they were younger or a trunk. You know, find a way to recycle furniture or a dresser. Maybe your child's went off to college. Uh, put some kits together and have a different drawer and label each drawer. A, a filing cabinet would be great for this as well, by the way. And that's one of the places I actually have my stuff, is in a filing cabinet because I was able to label the front of the filing cabinet which kit that I had. And I would grab that kit and I would go. All right. So we're going to start off first with non-perishable foods. So you want to write this down in your first slot. You want to write down non-perishable food. At least a 72-hour or a three-day supply for each person. All right, so we're going to write on here. We're going to write 72-hour supply of food. A non-perishable. Okay, there we go. If you can read my writing, I'm sorry, I'm writing right-handed for you here. Um, the next one would be a small stove with propane or other fuel. So you're going to need some sort of a um, some some sort of a biofuel or some sort of like a little uh, stove. I just found like a little. Um, uh, um, stove that heated like a pan at the Goodwill and I was able to do that. So some sort of a stove with um, like a little propane tank or maybe it takes um, maybe it takes sterno so some sort of little sterno stove something and something like a little pan to cook it in as well like a little cup or something perp and you know each person is going to need this. So you need some kitchen uh, tools. Just a few little kitchen accessories, okay? I guess that's not how you abbreviate accessories. And like uh, like a pot. Like a pot and a cup. Or a cup that can serve as a pot. You get the picture. Remember, the lighter weight, the better. Uh, a can opener. Can openers uh, are a must. And more than one, if each person's carrying one, then you'll have more than one. Um, a three-day supply of water per person. And again, per person. I'm writing down the arm of my sofa here. Again, I'm writing right-handed. You'll have to forgive me. I hope you can read this. And you'll want to figure that one gallon or 3.75 uh, of liters per person per day. Okay, so at least one gallon or 3.75 liters per person per day. All right, water purification tablets. Are you writing this down? Water purifica pur purification tablets per person. Um, You'll need possibly a supply of bleach. Uh, you add water to make a mild disinfectant in case you need a disinfectant or use 16 drops per gallon. And I'm going to write this on here so you'll see that. That's 16 drops per gallon of water if you have unclean water. Now if you're grabbing clean water you don't have to worry about this but if you think you're going to be grabbing some unclean water then you want to carry a vial of drops and I put a little dropper in mine. I used an old vitamin C makeup bottle dropper and I've just put bleach in it. Label it bleach. You'll need a portable radio and you'll also need walkie talkies. At least one set of walkie-talkies. And you'll need a portable radio and the crank kind or the solar kind is excellent. And you need extra batteries. I'm going to go ahead and put extra batteries under that list. Extra batteries here. There you go. And walkie-talkie and you'll make sure that you have some sort of a rechargeable, a way to recharge those. Sorry, I put an L in there. It don't belong there. Okay, so you make that make sure that's rechargeable. So that's your walkie-talkies. I hope you can see this. Um, you want to make sure everybody has a flashlight. And again, extra batteries. 
should have just done this list on my computer because you could probably read better than my right hand writing. Um, a battery operated hand crank solar powered cell phone um, charger. Okay. So a cell phone charger. Note that is something's playing. Um, a first aid kit and manual. So a first aid kit. Okay, first aid kit. Um, sanitation and hygiene items. You know, soap, towelettes, things like that. Toilet paper, towels, little like little hand towels that they make like little towels that absorb a lot of water, and you can use that for a body towel. And you'll need one to wipe out your cups and, and when you dry and wash your dishes as well. You'll need items for infants and toddlers. Um, you may need tools for shutting off utilities, so some specialized tools. You'll have to check your house out and uh, figure that out. A screwdriver and a hammer and things like that, that's always handy to have. Extra clothing would be the next one. For each person in the house, again, that's extra clothing. And including that jackets, uh, long pants, and long sleeve shirts as well. The heat goes out. Remember, we talked about dressing in layers in that first video and uh, extra clothes and I'm in that same one I'm also going to incl include besides a jacket and uh, long sleeves I'm also going to include in that hat and scarves things like that and gloves so hat scarves gloves jacket long sleeves you know, that kind of thing you're getting the idea of it Sturdy hiking and athletic shoes and socks. So, uh, sturdy shoes. Sturdy shoes. All right, tennis shoes. And extra socks. And on those socks, make sure they're water, uh, they're not, they're like water absorbent. You know the type that lets your feet breathe? Uh, like an all cotton sock or something like that. So just an extra socks. And, this is, and the next item would be sleeping bags and warm blankets. So sleeping bags and warm blankets. The next item would be uh, special needs items like um, prescription medications, eyeglasses, contact lenses, contact lens solutions. Uh, hearing aid batteries, hearing aids, things like that. So special needs. We'll just write on here special needs. You can write a list of your special needs for yourself. Like mine would be, um, mine would be like uh, medications, like my heart pills. Um, John's would be blood pressure pills. Um, contacts, extra contacts and glasses. That type of thing. And you can go back and fill in your list a little bit better later. I'm just hitting, giving you some highlights here. Um, photocopies of credit cards and identification cards. So you want photocopies of any ID cards. Photocopies of all ID cards for every person. Including their driver's license, anything along that line. And also... Uh, birth certificates. So you want to put copies of birth certificates. The next item is cash and coin, which means um, you need you need a certain amount of cash on you. Uh, if the banks are closed, you're going to need cash. Your credit cards most likely aren't going to work if the banks are closed, will they? No, they won't. And you're going to need the cash and coin in small, what they say, what they call denominations, which is, means it's small change. So I'm going to add this small change. So like fives, tens, and twenties. 
And you want to keep that cash in the kit, but you also want to keep cash hidden in other places as well. You're also going to want, can you still see in here? You're also going to want to keep some plastic baggies, plastic bags or Ziplocs. All right, and various sizes. You'll want various sizes on that, and I'll write on here various sizes. Okay, that's various sizes of the Ziploc baggies. And you can imagine what you need those things for. I mean, you'll need them for anything from dirty clothes to your toothbrush to stuff like that. You don't want to get your things dirty and wet. You don't want to mix your clean stuff with your dirty stuff. Even stuff to even keep like wet soap, uh, things like that in. But be careful because if you zip it closed all the way, you're also in a, in a harboring bacteria as well. So maybe not on the soap, but on things like your toothbrush and things. So um, you're kind of better off sometimes getting like extra plastic containers like they sell at the at the drugstore and like at Walmart and stuff. They sell like in like the dollar stores. They have like the little cases that hold those things. But be careful because those things can leak. So <laughs> and for you ladies out there, they're going to store a little extra makeup. Then you'll want to put them in a Ziploc baggie as well. I know that sounds silly, but most of us women, that's a comfort from home. Uh, anything that's got extra candy or food or whatever for the kids, you know. And when we talk about long-term food storage here, we're going to be talking about um, food like dehydrated goods, prepackaged meals. All right. So the next one would be a ground cloth or a tarp. Now, this is if somebody's planning on uh, bugging out. So this was on someone else's list. You can add that to your list. I'm not adding it to mine. I don't need a tarp or a cloth for anything. Not if I'm in home. I would put that in my bug out bag. So that's just me. That's up to you. I mean, I'm sorry, here we have rugs and they work. <laughs> um, powdered or chlorinated lime to treat waste and discourage insects. So if you're camping out, you can use um, powdered chlorinated lime to treat waste. And, uh, and it does. It really does discourage the insects and the insects landing from the poop onto your food. So uh, powdered, chlorinated, people don't think about stocking this, but it's very, uh, it's very, very important to put this in your storage. C-H-L-O-R-I-N-A-T-E-D, chlorinated, powdered, chlorinated, sorry, lime. L-I-M as in Mary, E, lime, powdered, chlorinated lime. The last thing here on our list, let's make sure you can still see, the last thing here on our list is going to be uh, to strike anywhere matches in waterproof container. So we need uh, waterproof matches and a waterproof container in waterproof container. Right, and you can get something like that at Walmart or online. Cheap, cheap, cheap. All right, that is the basics that I have for what you will need at home. So, um, and again, you can get that food supply. You can just go to Valley Food Storage. That's Valley. I'll write on here, Valley. Food Storage, and they do this for you. You can buy it by the bucket, and you can get a 72-hour supply of food, and that's for uh, up to five people per bucket. All right. And you can pay $100 or $56 for that. And um, I think it's about $56 for that for 72 hours for like up to five people or longer. And you can do breakfast foods, dinner foods, whatever, however many meals a day you think you're going to have. And, um, and there you go. This is, um, this is a symbol, an at home survival kit, lesson number one. Uh, if you have any comments or anything you want to add to it, then just go another page and keep adding to your list, okay? And when you get your list together, uh, start slowly collecting these things and get them put into a kit or some sort of a extra gym bag or something and put them away in an old dresser or back of a closet somewhere. Uh, some place where you can grab and go and get to it though, okay? This is Dr. Janie Pendleton with our Prepper Series Lesson Number 1, okay? Be sure and hit the like button. Be sure and share this video. And be sure and tell others about it so they can teach their children and 
you know, like I said, we're simplifying this to make this easier for you to understand. So we're going to start at the very beginning again, and we're going to list the things that you'll need. Blessings!